These are dark times, there is no denying. Our world has perhaps faced no greater threat than it does today. But I say this to our citizenry. We, ever your servants, will continue to defend your liberty and repel the forces that seek to take it from you. You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. And as always, we got a whole lot to get to. Uh, but I just seen this. I was scrolling through the news and I seen this. This is pretty interesting. We talked about this a few episodes back about how I think it's the feds starting these these uh, white supremacy rallies that are just popping up randomly and white supremacists are like marching through the streets and they all have the same outfits on. They have masks over their face. So we talked about that and I think it's the feds trying to trying to uh, label anybody that's conservative as white supremacists and then you have the president of the United States saying that white supremacy is the biggest threat to our nation. And the whistleblowers coming out saying that the FBI is fabricating the numbers and inflating the numbers of white supremacist incidents so that they can target white supremacists. So guess what, folks? If the president is declaring that anybody that voted for Trump or anybody that supports Trump is a white supremacist and you have the FBI targeting white supremacists, what does that give you? That tells you that the FBI will be targeting anybody that supports Donald Trump. And so I found this article interesting. It's titled, The Proud Boys and Other Patriots Confront and Then Strip the Masks Off of White Nationalists at Organ Protest. This is interesting. So yesterday during a flag wave at the Oregon City protest, a white nationalist group known as the Rose City Nationalists attempted to mix ranks with the Portland chapter of the Proud Boys. This video shows the Proud Boys pushing back these efforts and insisting on the group removing their masks and leaving the area. This is an audio only podcast, but I'm going to play the audio so you guys can hear it. Um, so here, check this out. Here's the audio for that. Get the fuck out! Get So all the white nationalists have masks over their face. All covered up, completely sunglasses, all wearing the same outfits, all black. They all look like buff runners, like they just got out of buds. Go! Go! Get the fuck out of here, dude. We're not here. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Go, bitches. Go. Go. Go, bitches. Go, bitches. He didn't talk to you. It's almost like they're trying to instigate a fight. Oh, shit. Fuck yeah, dog. Fuck yeah, dog. Go. Get the fuck out of here. So the white nationalists just got smoked. All still wearing their masks. One guy's looking for his sunglasses. Oh, he pulled his mask off. He's covering his face. He's covering his face and trying to run away. 
Defense! This is these are feds, dude. Oh, okay, guys, let's go back. They're all walking away. Yeah, these are feds, guys. I don't I don't know how else to describe this. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. You have these middle aged men. They all look like kids, man. Maybe in their twenties, maybe young thirties. They're all like extremely built. I would say, you know, remember how Joe Rogan said they all look like they just got out of Bud's training, which is the Navy SEALs training. And they're all wearing the same uniforms, tan pants, black shirts, fully face masked with sunglasses and hats. You cannot see their face. Why would they be so afraid for people to see their faces? Like white nationalists, wouldn't they be proud to be racist? Like, I, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. But then you see something like this. They come up to these guys, the Proud Boys, that are holding flags. They're not wearing masks. They got, you know, normal clothes on. They're all wearing different stuff. They got American flags that they're waving. And then this group of supposedly white nationalists come up fully decked out with the same uniform, masks on, sunglasses, faces covered. And they start instigating. So they come up out of nowhere. I, I swear, you got to watch the video. I'll post it on my uh, episode description. I'll link the uh, I'll link the video to my episode description. This is actually on Benny Johnson's page, uh, Twitter page. So, a pro American patriot rally ongoing. The feds show up dressed as Nazis. Patriots force feds out of rally. Unmask the feds who panic. The Nazis cry, tremble in fear, and then cops rush to save feds. And so this is just wild, man. I've never seen anything like this. I'm telling you guys, this is the feds. This is the federal government organizing these, these, uh, they're young kids. They're probably recruiting these people. They may be, I don't know, like maybe like an initiation to get into the FBI. Maybe they are FBI. But the thing is, is why are they so like, as soon as they started pulling these people's masks off, they all covered their face with their hands and started running. Why? I'm telling you, we're going to find out one day that these are indeed feds and that they're trying to instigate these these fights and they're trying to essentially make it look like there's all these uprisings of white nationalist rallies. I've just never seen this before in my life, folks. I've never seen white nationalist rallies pop up in the middle of of nowhere. And then what are they cheering for? I don't get it. Like, what are they trying to say? Like, they're they're racists. Okay. Like, but I don't get why they want to hide their faces. So, like, what? I just don't get it, man. I'm telling you, these are feds. These are feds. We, this, I'm telling you, five, ten years from now, it's going to come out that the entire January 6th riot was orchestrated, was a false flag operation orchestrated by the United States government. When you have informants, we're starting to learn that there was hundreds of informants at January 6th that day. Informants, undercover informants, folks. Like, what the hell is that all about? And now all of a sudden these white nationalist rallies pop up out of nowhere. Um, So here's another camera angle of the same thing. It's a it's a camera angle. It's a shot from across the street. But yeah, so you have these people that that they go and instigate. They go up to the Proud Boys uh, protest or or rally or whatever it is. And then uh, they instigate a fight. They're all wearing masks and concealing their identity to the point to where they're covering their face and running away. They're all young. They're all wearing the same outfits and they're all well built. And it's just weird how all this stuff is happening. I just thought that was interesting. I wanted to I wanted to hit that right out the gate. Uh, There was some other stuff happening with this Wagner group. So a lot of I don't even want to try and get into the nitty gritty with the Russia, Ukraine corruption. And listen, folks, anything we may think we know about Russia and Ukraine, we don't. We have no idea the insides and the games being played between these governments. And we're starting to learn how corrupt our government is and how corrupt our politicians are with the then vice president, Joe Biden, getting millions of dollars and and essentially – committing quid pro quos against Ukraine to fire prosecutors, prosecutors that are investigating the Joe Biden's son, Hunter, that was working on a corrupt gas company, Burisma. And it's 
the corruption is so thick and so deep between our government, Ukraine and Russia, it's it's hard to even really talk about. But this is something that's pretty crazy if it's true. You guys remember a couple, I would say maybe a month ago, I did an episode on how there was an accounting error uh, in the Department of Defense and where they overvalued the aid and weaponry we sent over to Ukraine. So they overvalued it, and then they just got like $6 billion out of nowhere. Poof. They're like, oh, well, we overvalued that, so we're going to go ahead and make that $3 billion in aid, which leaves us with $6 billion left over. So we got $6 billion now. It was an accounting error. That's what they called it. Well, I got an article here, hat tip to Richard Abelson, uh, dated June 25th. Did Putin and Progozin, I guess that is the... The Wagner militia, the head guy, this evil, this evil psychopath that leads the Wagner group. So did Putin and Prigozhin play the CIA to the tune of six point two billion dollars? Hacker Kim dot com has offered his take on the Wagner coup in Russia, intimating that Wagner boss Yev Yevgeny Prigozhin. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this guy's name. It doesn't matter. The guy's evil, anyways. Yevgeny Prigozhin may have collected billions from the CIA to stage a coup and then aborted the coup. <laughs> so essentially, he was working with the CIA. This is all alleged. I don't know. I can't verify this. This just came out just a minute ago. But it's really not surprising to me if this is true. I mean, it would certainly explain where the billions of dollars came from that we overvalued and sent to Ukraine. So this was his view. So the hacker, uh, so the hacker Kim.com said that this started as a power struggle between Prigozhin and Russian Minister of Defense Sergei, Sergei Shogu. In the beginning of the special military operation, Shogu and his team made mistakes, and Prigozhin became the strong critic of Shogu. Prigozhin then had success in Bakhmut with Wagner Group presenting himself as a better military leader than so Shogu. In my view, Shogu then provoked Prigozhin by limiting ammunition supplies to Bakhmut, resulting in Wagner Group losses and a strong reaction from Prigozhin. Many of you have seen the video of Prigozhin attacking Shogu and the Russian military leadership. So it looks like they got a lot of infighting going on there. Um, the Wagner Group, if you're not aware, the Wagner Group is kind of like what our Blackwater used to be. It's it's essentially a a paramilitary group, a militia that the government contracts, subcontracts out to fight their war so they don't have to declare war through Congress. That's what we use. We use Blackwater. It's not called Blackwater now. That They got in trouble years ago, and it's not called that anymore. I don't even know where, you know, I don't even know what it's called now, but we certainly have a lot of government subcontractors, paramilitary contractors that do basically all the dirty work, and they're paid by the government so that the government doesn't have to declare war through Congress. Um, so the Wagner Group is kind of the same thing. Uh, there's, and they got a few of them. They, they're using, so Russia is using their military and they're using their paramilitary groups like Wagner. And I think from what I've gathered, I've been reading into this quite a lot today. Wagner, this guy Progozin, he's the leader for the Wagner militia saying he, he wasn't agreeing with Russia military's top brass, essentially saying, look, we, we, we need ammunition. We need this and you're not giving it to us. And it looks as if the CIA may have stepped in and been like, hey, you know, if uh, if you stage a coup against Vladimir Putin, we'll give you six billion dollars, the six billion that they just found in the accounting error. And so Wagner allegedly, maybe if this is true, if this turns out to be true, said, OK, started marching towards Vladimir Putin. And then this is the craziest thing. Vladimir Putin and the Wagner guy kind of just shook hands and was like, okay, we'll get over this. I'll send you the ammunition that you want. And and then that was it. They called off the coup attempt. I guess Wagner, this guy Wagner, Pogosin didn't have the support he needed on the inside with Putin's top brass surrounding him. So you kind of need that if you're going to perform a coup against a sitting, well, what would be a president, Putin. You got to have support on the inside. You can try and, and storm the gates, but if you don't have someone on the inside, you're not going to be very successful. So it looks like he didn't have anyone on the inside. They shook hands, and Vladimir Putin said there's not going to be any charges of mutiny, that he's going to be able to go back to the front lines and take his militia group with them so that they can continue fighting the war. This certainly isn't good for Vladimir Putin because now everybody knows that there's infighting, which isn't good. I'm sure he's probably paranoid as hell. There is reports of him leaving Moscow. I don't know how true that is. 
They say his plane left. I don't know. Like I said, anything we think we know about what's happening over there, we have no clue. Because our corrupt Washington establishment, this bureaucracy that's pulling all the strings on the inside, they're, they're running the show here, folks, not us. They have no oversight, they answer to nobody, and they have unlimited funding. They can just make up $6 billion out of nowhere in accounting errors. And nobody has, nobody has to answer for anything. They don't have to show any receipts. They just do what they want when they want. And this is why people, the American people, have a problem with the war in Ukraine. because. They know it's corrupt, man. They know Ukraine has been corrupt politicians' piggy banks for decades. Look at Joe Biden. Look at his son, Hunter Biden. So it looks as if the CIA may have staged this coup with the Wagner Group, and then the Wagner Group just kind of took the money and, and ran. <laughs> so that begs the question, are we funding both sides of this war, folks? I made a show about that months ago and how we were funding Russia because Joe Biden relieved sanctions off the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, among many other things. They relieved sanctions off Russia for many other things, allowed him to have the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which kickstarted and funded his entire invasion of Ukraine. And then not only that, but we were giving money to Iran because we wanted because Joe Biden wants to make this nuclear deal through Iran. And then Iran was giving money to Russia to fight Ukraine. So essentially, like I said, we're funding both sides of this war. And so it looks like the CIA might have just got shafted out of $6 billion of taxpayer money to perform a coup against, a, against Vladimir Putin, and there was no coup. So we gave them, I don't know, did we just drop pallets of cash? I have no idea. None of this could be verified. I can't find anything on it because it just came out today. So Kim.com then posted this meme suggesting that $6.2 billion for Ukraine that Pentagon accountants discovered in June were actually pocketed by Prigozhin in return for his aborted coup attempt. Yeah, so if this is the case, then we're essentially funding both sides of the war. I don't know about you, but this is exactly why the American people do not agree with this Ukraine war that's happening. I certainly don't. I think I just want people to stop dying. I think Donald Trump said it the best. He was like, I just want people to stop dying. I, I, he said he can end this in 24 hours. I don't know how he would do that. But that certainly needs to be what happens. Because why are people being sent to their death over politicians' corruption? This is, this is what American people are so tired of, man. We get sent off to go fight wars that politicians start. None of their kids are sent to war. None of them are pulling triggers on anything. It's always the American taxpayer that has to go fight and die for a corrupt government like the United States government, this Washington swamp that we have right now. This is why Americans don't like this war. They were, I think they supported it in the beginning because I think they were misled by saying this is a war for freedom and democracy. And then, of course, you have Americans, you know, naive Americans that say, well, yeah, we want freedom. We want democracy. This is what they do, folks. They, the Washington swamp, this uniparty, is so effective at manipulating and, and subverting Americans and the, the message and the narrative. It's not Republicans and Democrats. It's the system versus the people, man. And this is why the people no longer support the Ukraine war, because we see stuff like this. And then it come then we come to find out that Joe Biden's you know, getting all this money from Ukraine sent to these 20 LLC corporations, these 20 LLCs, these shell companies, millions of dollars from Ukraine, millions of dollars from Romania, millions of dollars from China. It, it never ends. The corruption is so deep with this family, man. It never ends. And speaking of Joe Biden, I got an article here. Joe Biden used secret global cell phone while he was vice president, and it was paid for by Hunter's firm. So Peter Schweitzer on Sunday dropped a bombshell during an appearance on Fox News with host Maria Bartiromo, where Schweitzer, author of Secret Empire, said Joe Biden was using a secret cell phone and it was paid for by Hunter Biden's firm. Quote, what is the line of communications between Hunter Biden and his business partners and Joe Biden when he's vice president of the United States? Schweitzer said, it's not the government phone. It's not Joe Biden's personal phone. We know from the laptop that Hunter Biden's business paid for a private phone line that Joe Biden used while he was vice president. Okay, well then where's that phone? 
Like, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff Republicans need to get. Subpoena that phone. Subpoena the records from the phone company. Get all this stuff. And I know people are being frustrated. They're, I know you're frustrated with the Republicans not doing things fast enough. But I really want my listeners to understand and try, well, at least try to understand that they've only been really on working on this for six months. We got a whole year and a half to work on this. And I'm telling you, folks, they are going to get to the bottom of this. And the American people certainly see right through this bull. OK, they see right through this BS. They know there's massive corruption in the Biden family. The American people have always known there's massive corruption in our government. And it's really shocking to me how we have one side, the Democrats and the leftist Democrats, saying that our government's not corrupt, it's never been corrupt, and everything it does is perfectly fine and on the up and up. In order for them to believe that this government isn't being weaponized to prevent Donald Trump from being president, because they know if Donald Trump is president, their gig is over. In order for them to believe that, to support that, they have to believe that there's no corruption happening in our government. And so this is why you have literally not one Democrat interested at all in any of this Biden corruption, because they know that if they support, if they get to the bottom of this, if Democrats start showing support at getting to the bottom of this Biden scandal, which if true, and it turns out to be true, this would be the biggest political scandal in our nation's history. This this Biden ink, this Biden corruption. OK, and I think it goes much, much deeper than any of us can ever dream of. I actually think personally, from what I've been reading, I think the FBI was involved in a major way to secure funding. I think I think the FBI is incentivized to cover up for Joe Biden because they were complicit in all of this scandal, especially with the, when it comes to the quid pro quo in Ukraine. I think the FBI is covering for Joe Biden because they're, they were trying to secure funding from Ukraine. That is why this phone, this phone call from Joe Biden and some, some leader in Ukraine talking about how the FBI is not investigating because the FBI wasn't investigating because the FBI wanted funding. If it, if it is true that the FBI is working with him, I, at least I want to know that. No, no, they are not. I told you the, the FBI concluded he had nothing and they stopped. Uh, that, that was it. There's no reason to talk to him again. Mm-hmm. OK, I, I will check point. that and confirm that with you. So this is how it works, folks. This is what happens when you have corrupt government institutions with an unlimited bank account, unlimited spending. You get this. And what's really sad is now these institutions that the taxpayers funded are being used against taxpayers, taxpayers other than Hunter Biden, because Hunter Biden just got away with not paying $2 million in taxes and essentially getting away scot-free with a sweetheart deal, no jail time, no prison time. He got a federal gun charge. Okay, he got convicted of a federal gun charge. That's probably not going to lead to any jail time. And he got he got uh, caught with not paying his taxes or paying his taxes late, which was like two million dollars. Like everyone's saying it's a sweetheart deal. I don't think it is. I don't think, you know, of course, other people, you know, it depends on the prosecution. I think it's it's pretty decent. Like what happened? I think that's pretty normal. What I don't think is normal is the massive cover up in not investigating the plethora of other crimes that he committed. Like it wasn't just the gun crime in this tiny little late tax payment. Like they were investigating this for five years. And that's exactly what we're going to get into right now. So there was a um, so again, there was a cell phone. There was a cell phone, uh, let me see here, paid for by Hunter Biden's. So Schweitzer continued, it was from AT&T. It was $300 a month. It was a global phone where you could access somebody anywhere around the world. Peter Schweitzer said he shared the phone number and account information with the people over at the House Oversight Committee. I'm going to go ahead and play the audio clip of him talking about this. Here, check this out. Good point. Look, you both have broken so much news on this story. Peter, you broke a lot of this years ago uh, about the Biden family influence peddling. And you've got new information this morning, uh, breaking news on a cell phone that Joe Biden was using. Tell us about that. Uh, Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. What is the line of communications between Hunter Biden and his business partners and Joe Biden when he's vice president of the United States? It's not the government phone. It's not Joe Biden's personal phone. We know from the laptop that 
Hunter Biden's business paid for a private phone line that Joe Biden used while he was vice president. It was from AT&T. It was $300 a month. It was a global phone where you could access somebody anywhere around the world. Uh, we shared that phone number and that account information with people at the House Oversight Committee. My hope is that, that they haven't already. They will subpoena those records because I think it will give an indication on how tight the communication was. Uh, and that may be the phone for example, that the Ukrainian, the Burisma executive might have used mm -hmm. uh, in this allegation uh, that he talked to Joe Biden in re recorded conversations. I, I would just say one other thing, Marie, as it relates to that sort of shakedown phone call with Henry Zhao uh, that we alluded to. Henry Zhao in 2015 had already sent $5 million to the Bidens. Uh, he was the head of a harvest investment firm. Uh, and what's interesting is in the correspondence there, Hunter Biden again talks to Zhao in the context of this is a deal that's important to my family uh, involving his father. Let's also keep in mind we fixate on the criminal element of this. We also have to focus on the espionage element of this. Henry Zhao paid $5 million to Hunter Biden from an account that was part of a company that he co-owned with the family of the Minister of State Security of China, who's I'm in charge of the entire spy apparatus. And you see that in every deal that Hunter Biden did in China, these individuals that are sending him money have ties to Chinese intelligence. Unbelievable. We have to take a quick break and then talk more about that in these 17 recordings. That is unbelievable. Folks, what the hell is going on here? Like, how are Democrats not interested in this at all? Like, how can they? The mountain of evidence that is there is absolutely astonishing. And it's it it deserves it deserves a special counsel is what it is. And so and that's exactly what we need to demand. I looked up the criteria for appointing a special counsel, also known as a special prosecutor. And so there's four criteria that have to be met in order for a special counsel to be appointed for a president. So number one is a potential conflict of interest. Um, a special counsel is typically appointed when there is a potential, a, a potential conflict of interest that can undermine the impartiality and independence of the investigation. This could involve situations where the regular investigative agencies or prosecutors have a conflict due to personal or professional relationships with the individual or entities being investigated. There is no doubt that uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland and Joe Biden most definitely have a conflict of interest. OK, because and not just that, but also this guy Blinken, Anthony Blinken, because he was in Joe Biden's campaign manager. He was the one that essentially drafted that letter for the 51 Intel officials to sign. And so conflict of interest, that is a no brainer. Merrick Garland lied to Congress when he said that this prosecutor Weiss from Delaware had full authority to investigate whatever he wanted. And that's just not true. So he lied to Congress. Here, I got an audio clip of where Merrick Garland is essentially saying just that. Like, I gave this guy full authority to investigate whatever he wanted, to do whatever he wanted, and he didn't. Here, check this out. Uh, the U.S. attorney in Delaware has been uh, advised that he has full authority uh, to, to make those kind of uh, referrals that you're talking about or to bring cases in other jurisdictions if he feels it's necessary. And I will assure that if he does, uh, he will be able to do that. Does the Delaware U.S. attorney lack independent charging authority over certain criminal allegations against the president's son outside of the district of Delaware? Um, he would have to bring if it's in another district, he would have to bring the case in another district. But as I said, uh, I have promised to ensure that he's able to carry out uh, his investigation and that he be able to run it. And if he uh, needs to bring it in another jurisdiction, he will have full authority to do that. Well, he didn't, folks, because I got an article here that says. He tried this this prosecutor, Weiss, tried bringing a special counsel against against Hunter Biden and the Biden family, and he was denied. Not only was he denied, but the Biden family, Hunter Biden, was tipped off so that they can get any kind of documents away and out of the and, and out of there before 
this IRS before the IRS action day or day of action. So here I got an article from The Federalist dated June 22nd, whistleblower. The FBI tipped off people very close to Joe and Hunter before IRS investigative team's day of action. So Wolf told the team that she did not want them asking interviewees about Hunter's father or the big guy. The night before an Internal Revenue Service criminal investigation team began looking into Hunter Biden's tax crimes, was set to conduct key interviews and approach Hunter for a consented search of his home, FBI headquarters allegedly tipped off people very close to President Biden and Hunter Biden, thwarting the investigation, according to a whistleblower testimony to the House Ways and Means Committee released on Thursday. So, I mean... How does this guy Weiss have full authority to do anything he wants and then stuff like this happens? So you have people on the inside, on the corrupt uniparty, essentially telling Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, yo, you have the IRS doing a, they're going to be serving a warrant or a search on so-and-so day. You better make sure there's no documents around. Like this is so corrupt, folks. This is the, the whole of government protecting a president and his son and covering up all of their corruption while simultaneously trying to defeat a Republican nominee, his political opponent, his chief rival in the presidential election. This is corruption. This is third world banana republic stuff. And it's just absolutely unacceptable. And so that was the first criteria. So second criteria, number two, seriousness and complexity of the matter. This is the criteria for appointing a special counsel. Special counsels are often appointed for investigations involving significant or complex issues that require specialized expertise or resources. This could include cases with political implications, allegations of high-level corruption, or investigations that involve multiple jurisdictions. He meets these criteria exactly. Number three, public confidence and transparency. The appointment of a special counsel can help ensure public confidence in the integrity of an investigation, particularly when there are concerns about the fairness or impartiality of a regular investigative process. The transparency and independence of the special counsel's work are crucial for maintaining public trust. That's number three. I would say this fits that criteria very well. Number four, jurisdictional authority. The relevant legal framework determines the authority to appoint a special counsel in some jurisdictions. It may be the responsibility of the attorney general or an independent oversight body, while in others it may require legislative approval or judicial intervention. I mean, come on, man. This is exactly what people need to be demanding right now. This needs to be a special counsel. This situation is entirely way too complex, but there is massive, that there is a massive mountain of corruption involving this family and involving this election and the weaponize and the weaponizing of the federal government and the politicizing of our government institutions all to thwart the democratic process. That is what this is. Don't get it twisted, folks. This is all to interfere in a federal election. They're going to do exactly what they did in 2020. They're going to use the levers of government, these government institutions, whether it's the FBI, CIA, Department of Justice, whatever it is, in order to defeat Donald Trump and protect Joe Biden. That is exactly what is happening here. Exactly. And so here it is. You got federal, you have federal agencies tipping off Joe Biden and Hunter Biden so that they have so they get rid of whatever they need to get rid of. This is disgusting, man. Disgusting. This is exactly where a special counsel needs to be appointed. And so this is what I want you guys to do. This is your homework. I want you guys to call this phone number and I want you to leave a message, be nice, don't be don't be crazy. Just tell them what you think. This is where the American people need to step up and do something about this. You have to step in and do something. I I know it may seem like they're not going to do anything anyways, but you have to try. At least, I mean, it's easy to call a number. I want you to call this number. Here is the Department of Justice's main switchboard number. It's 202-514-2000. And most likely you're not going to get a a real person. It's going to be an operator. I've called these people multiple times. Sometimes you get somebody that answers. Sometimes you don't, but you can at least leave a message and tell them who you are, what state you reside in, and you tell them that you demand a special counsel into the Biden corruption scandal. Tell them, tell them exactly what's on your mind. 
so when you call the, the main switchboard, you tell them, I want to speak with Merrick Garland or the assistant attorney general. And you tell them how you feel. This is what you can do, folks. You can call these people and tell them what you feel. Tell them what you think needs to be done. Because in the end, folks, they work for you. They work for us. We pay their salaries. They're just not doing what they're supposed to do. And when they got millions of messages on their switchboard saying that they want that the American people want a special counsel, you have a better chance of them actually doing it. And so this is exactly what people need to do. Um, so obviously this is getting more corrupt. And why I say that Merrick Garland, Merrick Garland needs to be impeached, man. There needs to be impeachment hearings starting like yesterday. Okay, like yesterday there needs to be impeachment hearings. Um, let me see. I have that like Merrick Garland is in some serious trouble here because remind you, I just I played you Merrick Garland in that in that oversight hearing where he said that this guy Weiss had full authority to do whatever he wanted to do. So President Joe Biden and Attorney General Merrick Garland may face tough questions after Thursday's release of the testimony of the IRS whistleblower, which was released by the U.S. House Ways and Means Committee. I have the audio for that. I'm going to go ahead and play that for you. This is Jason Smith. He is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Check this out. Not one, but two IRS employees are blowing the whistle with evidence that the federal government is not treating taxpayers equally when enforcing tax laws. The whistleblowers were working on an investigation into Hunter Biden that opened in November of 2018 as an offshoot of a separate corporate investigation by the IRS. Let me emphasize, this was an investigation in the ordinary course of work at the IRS. It was not ordered by any individual, any chairman, or any political entity. The testimony we release today shows the IRS recommended charges against Hunter Biden that included attempt to evade or defeat tax, a felony, fraud or false statements, a felony, and willful failure to file returns, supply information, or pay tax. These tax crimes cover an estimated 2.2 million in unreported tax on global income streams to Mr. Biden and his associates from Ukraine, Romania, and China, totaling 17.3 million from 2014 to 2019. Mr. Biden personally received $8.3 million. See, folks, this is why there needs to be a special counsel. I mean, you're talking millions and millions of dollars from our foreign adversaries like China. And that's not the other thing. That testimony goes on. I have the full audio. I'll, prob I'll leave that in my podcast description as well. But Hunter Biden also received a $140,000 Porsche and a, like an $80,000 diamond. Like, what the hell is going on here? This is what people need to be demanding. This is why you need to call this number, 202-514-2000. Say, I want to speak to Merrick Garland's office, and then leave a message saying you demand a special counsel into the Biden scandal. That's what you should do. You want to know, and you want them to get to the bottom of all this corruption. Is our president compromised? That is the question you need to ask. And that's certainly people's concern. I don't really care about Hunter Biden. I don't care about Joe's crackhead son. I really don't. He, he buys hookers, Russian hookers. He's made millions of dollars. Okay. I care about one thing and one thing only. Is the president of this country compromised by foreign adversaries? We don't know that for sure, folks. This is the issue. They stopped at nothing to issue a point of special counsel into Donald Trump. This is what people are pissed off about. And this is why this is why the American people are seeing right through this bull crap, man. Is they see that the, they see the different treatment between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Donald Trump has his house raided by a SWAT team for documents. Joe Biden gets a phone call and his lawyers go over there and help the FBI get it all together. And people could see that this this government, the IRS, the FBI and the Department of Justice are being politicized. They could see it. They see right through this stuff. OK, the other side, they don't care. These people are the same people that say the ends justify the means. 
These are the same people like Whoopi Goldberg and the and the crazy ladies on The View. I don't know how anybody watches this. I had to watch it just because I had to get audio for you. But I don't. This is why, like, you have to be one one really really naive person to listen to the women on The View. This is why Whoopi Goldberg says that they should amend the Constitution to keep people like Donald Trump from running for president. These people on the left, these Democrats, are perfectly fine with a weaponized Justice Department. They're perfectly fine with the weaponized government as long as it is attacking their political opponents, as long as it keeps Donald Trump from running for president. Why? Because these people have been brainwashed into thinking Donald Trump is Hitler. This is why it's so dangerous for the media to, 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 to act like a bunch of Pravda propagandists and, and convincing American people that Donald Trump is some kind of Hitler, okay, or worse than Hitler. People don't, I'm telling you, people are not falling for this crap. They look at the difference between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. These people are looking at Donald Trump and they're saying, what are you talking about? This guy gave me the best 401k I ever had. This guy made the stock market, made me a bunch of money in the stock market. My wages were going up. My taxes were going down. My life, my quality of life was increasing. Everything was good under this guy. So why the hell do these people expect the American people to say he's worse than Hitler? They don't. They don't. And they're, they're, it's driving them nuts. And it's causing them to do insane things. Like just, just straight up, just weaponized Department of Justice. We're going to arrest Donald Trump because we want Joe Biden to win the election. Like they're just straight up doing this, right in people, right in the open, right in broad daylight. And unfortunately, you have Democrats that support it because, hey, look, to them, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. So they have no problem at all with this happening. And that's really how they think. They they are like the Bolsheviks. Okay, They, they they will support big brother government. As long as the big brother government gives them their desired outcome. But these are the same people that when things go too far and the pendulum swings the other way, they're going to be the first people crying uncle. Okay, because it always has always in the past and will always continue to swing the other way. They may work in your benefit now, but I promise you, once your enemies are gone, the wolf is still going to need something to eat and the wolf's going to come after you. And so look. It is, it is a no-brainer that everybody sees right through all this stuff. Everybody sees that this is absolutely being weaponized. And I'm telling you, the American people see it. And I can prove it. So I found this today. Um, I got some polling numbers here. So NBC polls, 74% of voters are deeply dis- dissatisfied and say nation is on the wrong track. So here's an NBC News poll shows voters dissatisfied with the direction of the country and having concerns about Trump and Biden ahead of 2024. We have a brand new NBC News poll that we are releasing this morning, and in it, voters are deeply dissatisfied with the direction of the country. They're concerned about the mental and physical well-being of President Biden. But the story of the last four years is still true today. And in this poll, the best thing for a Biden re-election campaign continues to be the presence of Donald Trump. Trump. Just 20 percent of voters believe this country is headed in the right direction. Seventy four percent say the nation is on the wrong track. Let me tell you something about this moment. We have had this sustained period of 70 percent. About a- Let me explain something to you. That's all you needed to hear from this douchebag. Joe Biden only won by like 42,000 votes in like three different states, folks. OK. Trust me when I tell you there is a lot more than 42,000 people that are going to go ahead and pull that lever for Donald Trump if it means they don't have to deal with this anymore. This is misery for people. They don't care. You're talking about independents and probably some Democrats that if they can get what they had four years ago with Donald Trump, they don't care. They'll pull the lever. The only people that are going to be voting for Joe Biden are the people that hate Donald Trump so much that they would be willing to destroy the country and destroy themselves just to not see him elected. But you have a lot of other sane people, rational, you know, rational people out there, sensible people that are like, look, I went through Donald Trump's administration. We're going through Joe Biden's administration. And I'm sorry, but I thought I was getting normalcy with Joe Biden. And we're just not. I thought Joe Biden would be better. And he's just not. I thought he would he would unify this country. And he just gave us a banana republic. So I'm sorry, but he's not better, and I'm going to go ahead and vote for Donald Trump. 
That's going to be way more than 42,000 people, folks. I'm telling you, there is going to be millions and millions of people voting for Donald Trump. And that is exactly that is exactly why they have to get Donald Trump out and off of that ballot. That's that's the only way they see they're going to be able to defeat him. So prepare for things to get worse. Okay, the indictments are going to come down the tube. And really, the indictments are nothing at this point. That's why they're just shocked that people that Donald Trump's poll numbers are increasing, even though they weaponize the government. Like I said, it's like they're upset that they're like, man, we weaponized the government and they're still voting for him. This is crazy. Like, so, yeah, it's like, dude, like people see right through this stuff. People see exactly what you're trying to do. And so poll numbers come out. Trump's GOP lead grows after latest indictment poll finds. This article came out nine hours ago. Former President Donald Trump has expanded his lead over Governor Ron DeSantis and the rest of the Republican presidential field since Trump's latest indictment on federal criminal charges, according to new national NBC News poll. Why, folks? Why? Because people see right through it. The American people do not like government bullies. They never have. And you also have the American people that love the underdog. OK, this guy is it is it is clear and obvious to every single person in this country that the entire system is being weaponized against Donald Trump to prevent him from winning the election. I mean, they don't even hide it anymore. They come right out and say it. And I got uh, audio to prove it. Here's Whoopi Goldberg saying what she thinks should happen. And I'm telling you, this is exactly how other leftist Democrats feel as well. They they think just like this here. Check this out. <laughs> what really is making me it was really starting to freak me out is the idea that we're not even discussing changing the Constitution to make it say you cannot be in jail. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. be well, the that, president. Well, that part. I mean, I, I because my fear and an amendment that, would be nice. I, I, you know, I'm a I'm a big fan of amendments. Because yes. I feel like unless we start to plug these holes, yeah. this is going to keep biting us in the behind. And, you know, it yeah. really is going to take the people mm-hmm. saying, hey, listen, because if I can't yeah. vote when yeah. I come out of jail, yeah. why can you be no. president? Yeah. That's you know? a wonderful point. I mean, and amendment, very amendments are yeah. very American. You know, I mean, it's it's some people argue that the Constitution is not a breathing and living thing, that it's sort of stagnant. I, of course feel differently. I feel that it's a living and, and breathing thing because we didn't know there would be us cell, the vote. cell phones before. Yeah, and no, we well, yeah. didn't know I mean, that the, there the, would be the, AR-15s. There should be a It has to grow with the country. Yeah. So, but this, what has happened, I, I know this is really weird, but my, I've been having strange thoughts. What I think has happened for us as a nation is over the past 10 years, Weird stuff has been happening in the country to show us where the problems are. I think the fact that we have this situation now with you know who yeah. is there to tell us, hey, y'all have a problem. Right. And oh, well, these yes. kinds of things are going to start coming up because these kinds of people, people who are not reading the Constitution, don't yeah. know the law, don't know how this country runs, are now starting to get in because I. I just, there's some things that, you know, we'll fight over because we have two different opinions. These people don't get it. These people don't get it, folks. They don't get it. (sighs) To stop these type of people from getting in. So are you saying you want to change the Constitution to keep American citizens that you don't like from running for president? They don't get it. And just when she said, like, in the last 10 years, things have been getting really weird around here. They don't correlate the two. They do not correlate. They cannot connect the dots. Things got weird when Donald Trump came down that escalator because the left lost their freaking minds. They could not control themselves. They could not control their emotions and they could not control themselves. And they freaking lost their minds. They went apoplectic. They fell for this this game that the media was playing, they went completely, they they got completely brainwashed by the media. Donald Trump came down that escalator. Millions and millions and millions of American people liked what he had to say. He ran a perfect campaign and they voted for him and he won. That's, that should have been the end of the story. 
the weird stuff started happening is when you had politicians coming out before he was even inaugurated, like Jamie Raskins, saying that he was going to impeach him without even committing a crime, without him even doing anything. You had the FBI and the Hillary Clinton campaign colluding with one another to create a rush, a, a fake Russian collusion hoax. They got fake FISA warrants. They started spying on his campaign and then spying on, spying on his presidential, uh, 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 his presidency. Like this is the weird stuff that started happening. And it wasn't from Donald Trump. All this guy tried doing was just being president. He tried delivering the best country he could for the American people. And he did. He did a great job. Despite the fact of the Democrats and these radical leftists that went completely just batshit crazy trying to destroy him every freaking time he turned around. So things got weird, okay, when the leftists and the Democrats were perfectly okay with the government being weaponized to destroy Donald Trump. That's when things got weird. Now, in an alternate universe, and an alternate reality, what should have happened was Donald Trump should have did his job for four years. The Democrats could have accepted the 2016 election, accepted that he won, and accepted that millions of Americans voted for him, and he was duly elected by the Democratic process and the Electoral College. And then he could have went on, gave the American people a good country, a thriving economy, thriving wages, a better quality of life, peace in the Middle East, peace happening around the world. And then during that time, Democrats could have campaigned and then tried running again. But no, what did they do? They went absolutely bonkers and tried to destroy this man, kicking at every single foundational pillar, holding up our country kicking at the load-bearing walls and waiting for this thing to come down. Essentially, they destroyed democracy in the name of democracy to protect democracy. That's what it is. And it's completely justifiable to them. Like I said, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. To them, the ends justify the means. And so they were perfectly okay with Russia, fake Russia collusion hoaxes and illegal FISA warrants to spy on his presidency. Why, folks? Where is the hatred for this man coming from? I don't get it. I don't get it. And why can these people not see that it's them that are the problem? That the weird thing started happening when they went batshit crazy trying to get rid of Donald Trump. This is what I don't get. How can they not see this? And then you have people like Whoopi Goldberg, and I'm telling you, she's not the only one that thinks this way. This is how all the radical leftists think. They want to amend the Constitution to keep people like Donald Trump for running for president. Why? Are you serious? What? What? The people don't deserve a thriving economy? The people don't deserve peace around the world? The people don't deserve wage increases? The people don't deserve a good country? So you want to amend the Constitution to prevent anybody from giving the American people a thriving country and a better quality of life? You want, you want to amend the Constitution to prevent that from happening? Are these people stupid? Of course they are. They're not, it's not that they're dumb, folks. They're just, they are brainwashed. They cannot get over this obsession with hating Donald Trump. It is so bizarre. It is the weirdest thing I think this country has ever experienced. It's like McCarthyism on steroids. And you have every single government institution being weaponized against Donald Trump, whether that's the justice system, whether that's the, the, um, the, the legal system. You have a complete and utterly weaponized government designed specifically to prevent Donald Trump from being elected again. And I'm telling you, folks, millions and millions of more people are going to be voting for this guy. He had 62 million votes one year. He had 75 million votes the next year. And I'm telling you, he's going to have 80, 90 million votes this coming election in 2024. And I'm telling you, if the United States government and this weaponized bureaucracy, this Washington establishment swamp prevents the democratic process, then they're going to have some big issues. And it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be awful. They're sitting here poking the American people at the chest and telling them, you don't pick the president. We do. You're going to vote for who we tell you to vote for. And people don't like it. So, you know, people like Whoopi Goldberg. 
They don't trust the democratic process, you know, for being defenders of democracy. These people don't give a flying rip about democracy. They're actively and knowingly destroying democracy. They're thwarting democracy in, to protect democracy. You know, so it's, it's just amazing that these people are willing to destroy it all just to keep this guy from giving the American people a good country. Because I'm telling you, the first thing that's going to happen as soon as Donald Trump gets in there and he's going to clean up the swamp, he's going to clean up the FBI, he's going to clean up the Department of Justice, he's going to clean up all these corrupt institutions. And he can do that with polygraph tests. He goes in, gives everybody at the heads of the FBI a polygraph test. Did you have anything to do with any of these scandals? Polygraph test says you're lying. You're out of here. Next, start accepting applications immediately. Fire people 50, 100 people at a time. Just go in there and start firing people. By the time these people catch on to what you're doing, fire 50 more. Polygraph test, he can do this. If he has control of the House and the Senate and the White House, he can clean up this country and give the country back to the American people. Why would the American people not want that? So like I said, people like Whoopi Goldberg and these corrupt politicians, all these elite class people, the rich people, the millionaires and the billionaires, you know, the, the people Democrats say that they're against. All these people, they, they don't understand why the American people are seeing right through this BS. They don't understand why the American people like Donald Trump. Because they're not living in the same world as you folks. They're not living in the same reality. Most of these people don't even pump their own gas. And they're trying to tell you that you don't deserve a thriving economy. They're trying to tell you you don't deserve peace around the world. They don't, they're trying to tell you you don't deserve higher wages and cheaper groceries and cheaper gas. Because to them, it doesn't matter. None of that stuff mattered to them in the first place. And then you have their Bolsheviks, the leftist Democrats. They'll vote for their own destruction if it means not having Donald Trump because they're completely brainwashed. They've been completely brainwashed by ideological subversion from the Democrat Party because the Democrat Party is effective at brainwashing. They're effective at messaging and they're effective at owning the language. You know, when you convince millions of people that Donald Trump is Hitler, yeah, I would say you'd have a, a large group of people that are going to pretty much do whatever they have to in order to keep Hitler from being elected. But the problem is, is he's not Hitler. And they're going to have a hard time trying to convince the people that when you got this guy giving them an awesome country, a thriving economy and a thriving country, especially compared to Joe Biden, Joe Biden compared to Donald Trump, he looks like a nursing home patient. When you compare these two administrations, there's no comparison. It's night and day difference. Joe Biden is the black background to Donald Trump's diamond. Contrast, folks, contrast. People can see the stark contrast. That is why his poll numbers are increasing. And I'm telling you, it, this is going to be incredible. The American people are going to come out in such force, in such numbers, in 2024 election. It is going to be phenomenal. You're going to have people that are just begging for anything but this. People that, that have to decide whether they're filling their tank up or getting groceries for the week. People that have to decide whether they're going to get good homeowner's insurance or they're going to have to forfeit their home because they can't afford anything. People that are having to go get second jobs because they can't afford anything because of inflation. People that are just tired of all the lies and bullshit that comes out of this administration. I mean, it's people voted for Joe Biden because they were convinced that this was going to be some kind of vote for normalcy, vote to put the adults back in the White House. It was none of that. It was none of that at all. Joe Biden is nothing that they said he was. And it's only getting worse and worse and worse. And then on top of that, people see all the corruption, the rampant corruption running through his family. The Biden, Biden Inc. Politico did a report back on this in 2015. Biden Inc. Nobody's, this isn't new to anybody. Certainly not me. The only people that didn't know the Bidens were corrupt are people that haven't been paying attention. But those same people that, that just started paying attention during the Trump administration when Donald Trump got elected, those same people see the difference between these two administrations as well. And I'm telling you, they were much, they were much more willing to vote for Donald Trump than they are Joe Biden. The, the United States government sees that. The, the, the corrupt Department of Justice sees that. The FBI sees that. And the corrupt Washington establishment sees that.
and they see that they got a big problem. And so prepare for things to get a lot worse for Donald Trump. But I'm telling you, folks, Donald Trump's going to punch through all this stuff. And this will be the most important election in your entire life. Because the Overton window is changing, folks. And if this is allowed to happen, if the American people allow this corrupt Washington establishment to retain power this way, in this manner, it's over. The Overton window will be concreted, will be cemented in forever. And this type of stuff will be normalized. Month-long elections, weaponization of government institutions, favoritism through the IRS because of politicians' kids, all this will be normalized forever. And I'm, I'm afraid to say that I think the American people will officially have lost their country. But it doesn't have to be that way. You people have a choice. The American people have a choice in 2024. And I think you know what to do. So that's all I got for today's show. I hope I kind of hit on a few good articles. I think that are going to matter this week. You're going to be hearing a lot of stuff about this Wagner group and how possibly the CIA may have got duped for $6 billion from that accounting error that happened a couple months ago from the Department of Defense. Um, the, obviously, the Biden corruption is going to be getting it's going to be getting a lot, a lot worse. It's going to be getting a lot worse for Joe Biden. And uh, <laughs> sorry, that was my that was the worst Donald Trump impression ever. The <laughs> the Biden corruption is going to be getting a lot worse. Uh, this is and you guys got to give Republicans a little leeway. They've only had this house for six months. I have a feeling at least it's good to know and it's refreshing to know that we actually have a few people in there actually trying to get to the bottom of this. I think the Durham report was a huge letdown for a lot of us. There should have been so many prosecutions. I'm a, I'm I'm a so so on John Durham. Like I this guy seems like a pretty stand up dude. You know, followed the law, did what he could, and just went in there. But then you look at the other side. He didn't. He didn't interview um, a few key people like Comey and this guy um, Misfit. This guy Misfit. He he didn't interview these people. He couldn't find Misfit. Misfit was the key architect for all of this. He was the guy that kicked the entire Russia collusion hoax off. And so he wasn't interviewed by Durham. And so it's like, I'm like in the middle. I think there's going to be, I don't know. I, I like, I don't want to say Durham did improper things, but I just don't, I don't think people were really satisfied. Obviously people were not satisfied with the Durham report. Every person he brought prosecutions against got away because it was in a DC courtroom. Okay. The same courtrooms that hate Donald Trump, the same courtrooms that Donald Trump's going to be having a trial in. So look. It's it's clear and obvious this country is heading in the wrong track. I just showed you audio that 74% of Americans feel the same way. And you can change all that in 2024. The Biden corruption is going to be getting a lot worse. They know that Joe Biden is going to lose this election. And that brings another thing we'll talk about in the next episode. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. skyrocketing in the polls. And they're censoring the hell out of him. So there you go, folks. They're doing the same thing, the RFK, that they did to Bernie Sanders. So how do you Bernie Sanders supporters feel about that? Like, Bernie Sanders got screwed not out of just one nomination, but two. And then Democrats are perfectly okay. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the government. Everything's perfectly fine. Even though Bernie Sanders got screwed out of two nominations. And now they're doing the same thing to RFK Jr.? Like, when is enough enough? Like, when will Democrats start stepping up and saying, yeah, you know, a weaponized government, politicized institutions, not such a good idea. I don't know. Probably when it's one, probably when they start coming after them. So I just hope that we end up, we get John, I hope we get somebody in there, a Republican, either Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump or both. I would love to see them run on the same ticket. And it is possible. I did a show about that. I think they still are going to be running on the same ticket. That's just me. I'm making that prediction that I'm probably going to be regretting, but I'm making the prediction Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis will run on the same ticket. It is legal. It's it's not impossible. It's been done before. So that's how I feel. And hopefully we get them in there and we can give this country back to the American people. Democrats, whether you like Donald Trump or not, they have to admit that the guy was a better president than Joe Biden. And that is becoming increasingly harder and harder and harder for them to deny.
And it's becoming harder and harder for Democrats in this corrupt Washington establishment to convince them that he wasn't because they see the stark contrast between the two. So that's all I got for today's show. I just wanted to do a brief summary there in the end. Um, if you guys have any questions, you get a hold of me at Stephen Torriello Show at gmail.com. Let me know what you think. I'm going to leave all the media, the articles in my podcast description um, you, so you guys can go ahead and read into all this stuff for yourself. Um, if you could, please, I would really appreciate it if you shared the show with your friends and family and tell them just to hit the follow button. That really helps get the show on the charts, helps helps the algorithm, helps get the show out there to a bigger audience. That is what we want, folks, so more people can hear this stuff. More people need to know that that 74% are not happy with the country. More people need to know that Joe Biden had a secret cell phone he was using for communicating with his son Hunter for corrupt business deals. More people need to know all this stuff. So in order for them to know it, they just we're going to have to beat this algorithm. The only way to do that is by sharing. I don't ask for any money. I don't ask for donations. I don't ask. I don't get paid for this. I don't have any advertisers. I do this 100% free. And I don't expect anything. All I really want is just for you guys to share it so other people can hear what is happening out there so that other people may can, can be informed. And maybe, just maybe, it would sway the mind of some person out there that's just looking for the right, the right answer and the right information. So you would be doing this country a favor, and you'd certainly be doing me a favor, and I would really appreciate it. So... As always, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to go ahead. I'm doing a back-to-back show. I'm recording right after this one, guys. So I'm going to have something else for you guys. I'm going to put something else out for you. I have so much stuff to talk about. This wasn't even, didn't even brush the top of all the the stuff, crazy stuff that's happening. So I'm doing right back-to-back episode. I just need to go ahead and finish this one up because it takes time to edit and, and, uh, do the description and everything. It takes time to produce everything. So I, I would just do a, like a three long, a three hour long episode, but that would take entirely way too much time to edit. I don't have a producer. I do it all myself. So we're going to do this in one hour increments. So thank you guys. As always, I want you guys to have a good day. Have a great week. God bless you and God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.